Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post watershed production. Good evening and welcome to an unsettling and potentially dangerous late night large. I'm your shifty looking stoner anarchist, Aaron Bliss, and next to me is your greasy late night prowler, Mike Large. Good evening, all. Hope Tonight's well. thrilling episode focuses on the concept of folk devils. Mike, having explained to you, spoon fed to you earlier, what folk. I'll spoon feed something to you in a minute. <laughs> That's That's <laughs> uh, so, you rude uh, from spoon feeding you earlier, could you uh, regurgitate? Earlier. Could you regurgitate <laughs> the definition of folk devils for all the folk out there? Oh, you devil! Or not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, something made up by an idea made up by the media. It's uh, used to create. The impression that uh, uh, an outsider, outsiders are, are deviants and you blame them for things, and and it's uh, used to generate hate for those groups of people. Well, not quite coherent. But it is. That'll do, Mike. Thank you. Coherent enough. <laughs> I was uh, I was lucky enough to study the uh, inception of the term from the original text uh, on my original degree by Stanley Cohen, the sociologist, Folk Devils and Moral Panics, which he wrote about the mods versus the rockers in the 1960s. We are the mods, we are the mods, we are the, we are the, we are the mods. You get murdered by the rockers, Mike. I wouldn't get murdered by no one. Have you seen Des and Troy? <laughs> As Mike tried to explain, Folk Devils are generally portrayed, e uh, originally in folklore, obviously, but now the media, uh, as outsiders, deviants, Blame for crimes or other sorts of social problems. Can you think of any recent folk devils, Mike, in the media? Obvious ones. Chavs. Maybe? Yeah, that might be an example. Demonisation of the working class. Yeah. I guess if you refer to chavs, the media will instantly paint one or two pictures, isn't it? It's either going to be the scrounging single mother or or a family on or benefits, or hooded like, the, yeah, teenage. gangsters. Knob, gangsters. Yeah, but they're not. What well, wannabe no. gangsters? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Okay, Chav Chavs is a good example. Did you do you remember? Uh, did you read a an article? Nope. Of course you didn't, because nobody reads the Daily Mail. But there was an article in the Daily Mail uh, that de tried to demonise emos. Emo culture was going to spawn a generation of kids that just wanted to cut themselves and I don't know unleash their misery on the rest of the world. It was a pretty irresponsible and not well-researched article at all. You're free to read whatever trash you want to. Go on, hit me. Islamic terrorist. Come on, that's that's an obvious folk devil. <laughs> it's a really obvious I, folk devil. I, I guess they've turned it into one, yeah. Yeah, well, that's what they do. Because folk devils isn't about making up something that doesn't exist, although in a case of papers like The Sun, oh. then obviously, you know their freedom to make up anything is well known but it's usually based on some element of fact i.e. these people do generally exist in one way or another in one form or another mm. so the Islamic terrorists I think is a good one I would suggest uh, paedophile why? as folk devil paedophile as folk devil why? explain okay I'm not sure I follow. personally I, th I think the media builds up paedophiles to be a lot more dangerous than they actually are when I say dangerous I mean really? Pre prevalent prevalent is what I mean really? yes you do realise the statistics about you being almost 100% more likely to be assaulted by someone in your family and yet we're all made to think that paedophiles lurk on every street corner, in every playground. They're, they're like the boogeyman waiting under the bed all the time. It's, the, it's that kind of culture making it illegal to take pictures which have children in them. Do you not yeah, agree with that? Do you not agree that's, that's gone too far? Too far like yeah, something at the school or something, and you all have to sign something to say any pictures or whatever taken won't be put anywhere for 
other people to see it's just for personal use at home right yeah I mean, I mean there's do you know I think it applies uh, it applies to recordings of children as well parents have to be very careful when they're recording their kids in school plays and what have you and it also I believe applies to children's voices really even if you're recording like kids singing in the choir and stuff mm, I didn't know that I, I, I think it does apply to that it, it creates that culture in which moral panics develop and then that obviously the culture then will change probably based on that like we've discussed back in the 70s you you wouldn't have thought twice about taking a picture of your kid at the school gates or, or in his um, new uniform or whatever it was but now you know you've got to sign waivers you've got to think twice in underwear <laughs> get out that's what she said just get out <laughs> that's what she said <laughs> just going back to the Islamic terrorist you've only got to look at airports <clears throat> to see how that's uh, become a moral panic and the, the culture has changed towards incorporating it as a folk devil but I mean how unjust is that really like the procedures security procedures at airports it's not like it's not like they nothing good has ever come from it yeah but you're you're starting to go into territory that dangerous territory that's the same kind of thinking that leads the government to spy on every text and email and communication you send to anyone on the mm. off chance that you might be a criminal uh, I see what you're saying but yeah. you know that's not what I'm saying I think you're struggling to make your point but I, I think oh, I I've made my point <laughs> <laughs> no Mike <laughs> not this time I wish I made my point <laughs> Okay, airports maybe is a bad example. Maybe we give a little bit more leeway at airports. Maybe there should legitimately be zero tolerance of anything resembling anything at an airport. But just look at the streets and the you know the the calls to ban all kinds of Muslim dress and what have you. I mean that's all come from the culture whipped up by the media, really, hasn't it? I would suggest. Probably, yeah. I think you're probably right for once in your life. Wow, high praise indeed, Mike. So, s certain subcultures. You've already mentioned chavs. Like I say, there was an attempt to portray emos. One area that folk devils are most likely to be represented in is music. Do you remember? Marilyn Manson fans? What? This was particularly in America more than us. But, you know, fans of Marilyn Manson. Surely you didn't. Surely you must have read after Columbine and all those kinds of massacres. Yeah. The first thing they mention in the newspaper is what music did they like to listen to, uh, and try and draw a distinction between it. Oh right, they were Marilyn Manson fans. Well, that explains it, because because yeah, he encourages all of that kind of stuff. There's a lot of that that goes on. Stanley Cohen's piece on folk devils and moral panics that got stemmed from mods and rockers. Okay, go on. Computer games. There you go. Films. See, you're uh, you you're going on the right lines now. Yeah, you've. You think of the right, the right kind of topics. Oh, children are, are violent because of computer games. Exactly. Those are more moral panics than folk devils, but that's what we'll move on to. Nobody bedevils folks quite as much as you, Mike. So, you were going down an interesting track, though, because you were leading us on the jewel-encrusted road to moral panics. Yay! Now, a moral panic is the natural consequence of the creation of folk devils. Mike? Folk devils create moral panic. Exactly. Before we go okay. into exactly what determines a moral panic, what, what were you... You were talking about Just other things that created sort of folk devils or... You, well, you could talk about moral panics. Yeah. Go on. Well, like the uh, video games and stuff, how they say... Uh, or the media obviously always go on about something. something's happened... Uh, like a child's act ag acted aggressively and it's because they played whatever name of a game like that happens to have a bit of violence in or they watched a certain film or something crap like that and of course in this country the video nasty moral panic do you remember that of the 80s of course you don't because you weren't alive <laughs> in the I, I was hardly alive but the uh the moral panics in the 1980s of Video Nasties, that was when a slew of basically low-budget horrors came out. Gore fest, slasher films, all the classics, Cannibal Holocaust, that kind of thing. Groovy. Everything you need for a quiet Friday night in alone. Nice. <laughs> With a bottle of Jack Daniels and maybe some lube. A uh, lube. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the 1980s moral panic on, on uh, Video Nasties led to 
the kind of incorporation of top shelf videos and the age limits being strengthened and I, I believe that's when the X rating came out as well which obviously has been shelved since then but that's when the X rating came out for like particularly sexually explicit material generally pornography whoop whoop <laughs> But yeah, that was a, that's another good example, a recent example of moral panic. Mike, if we take it right back, the most archetypal example, one might say, of a moral panic, witch hunts. Yeah. And I'm not talking witch hunts as in the metaphor, as in, literally oh, let's not turn this into a witch hunt, witch as in hunts. literally hunting, hunting witches. witches. Yes, in the 16th century and such. That, that was fun. Not for the witches, or the accused witches, I'd imagine. No, because of course, if they're witches, why, why the hell would they not just, uh, you know, get on a broomstick and fly away? Yeah, that's that's obviously the question. Like zap some people. And yeah, shit or like. But that's a classic example of moral panics at its most extreme, because obviously back in the day, the, the reason that that kind of thing happened back then, obviously, is complete ignorance. Were stupid. They were thick as pig shit. We say they're thick as pig shit. To be honest, we probably are as well. The only reason we're not smarter is because of the combined knowledge of all those hundreds of years of human history. So, you know, it's easy to call them dumb, but we have lots of history to recollect and look back on as well as scientific progress. But they were tossers to, to, to persecute your fellow man like that. Burn to burn, burn, wi stake. burn women at stake uh, is, is pretty stupid. Well, 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 easy. <laughs> now there are plenty of reasons why you could justifiably burn a woman at the stake. Why have you left uh, the bedroom? What are you doing? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've come home from work. Where's my dinner? Next time, you'll make me that sandwich. Please just uh, discredit, to... discredit every word that Mike just said. But he does have a point in that. Uh, he does have a point. No, the, the, I heard there is a rumor. And that that there was uh, there was a person accused of being a witch who was burnt at the stake, but some say that she escaped the flames and flew away on a broomstick, only to return oh, just... in 1975 and actually stand for government and become prime minister <laughs> in 1979. <laughs> oh, there right. you go. <laughs> so moral panics are in essence controversies that involve arguments and social tension and in which disagreement is difficult because the matter at its centre is actually taboo. So it's things that people don't like to discuss. And a rather amusing line uh, that's put in the Wikipedia report is the media have long operated as agents of moral indignation, which sums up the Daily Mail quite <laughs> adequately, I think. You know, aren't you hating on the Daily Mail tonight? You, you can't hate on the Daily Mail. It's, just, it's like hating on the dandy just a comic really but obviously you can hate its effect on people because it can produce very bigoted people anyway those who foster the culture of a threat to the prevailing social cultural values are known generally as moral entrepreneurs that's an interesting and very uh, eloquent title to give to people who essentially whip up hysteria yeah Back it back in the 16th century, it'd be the person with the loudest voice marching through the street, pointing at someone, saying, "She's a witch." Yeah, that would be a moral entrepreneur, apparently. Ignorant dick. So, w would you say that folk devils and moral panics are generally engineered on ignorance, fostered from ignorance, either fostered from ignorance or fostered to play on? Yeah, people's ignorance. Well, let me... Be to exploit people's ignorance. Either they're yes. ignorant themselves okay. and actually believe the crap, or they just want other people to believe it, isn't it? That's True. <laughs> Let's face it. <gasps> black men used to be posted as the folk devils, didn't they? Yeah. You know, racism was founded on the threat of something new. The black man was the exotic other, and uh, he became the folk devil. Yeah. You know, you'd turn you'd turn this uh, interesting newcomer who was different into someone who was different and wanted to change the cultural values and corrupt society. I mean, let's face it, the worst parts of the racist kind of ideology was that black men would corrupt our white women, folk, that kind of thing. Yeah, it was, yeah. One of the tools of intolerance. You're a tool. <laughs> Go on. 
give you a tool out of the head in a minute. Anything based on intolerance uh, is essentially... It needs folk devils. For instance, like I say, racism, the folk devil was the black man, right? And the moral panic was the black man's going to corrupt our women, uh, going to fight our men, I don't know, that kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Oh, do, yeah, yeah. Would you agree that almost all intolerance is based on... It needs a f- every intolerance needs a folk devil and a moral panic. Let me give you another uh, example. C- it's kind of well, you, it's hang on, moral- a lot of intolerance is based on fear. Yeah, but unknown. but but it needs. That's what I mean. It needs uh, someone to create that. In the first yeah, place. it needs yeah. a it needs an articulation in terms of uh, a concept. Yeah, a, a focused so concept. Someone says, "Oh, by the way, you should be scared of." the black man because he will do this and yeah. that and this and that and then other examples go, oh really okay <laughs> modern examples eastern Europeans yeah oh the you know all oh, those eastern Europeans they're uh, you know they'll, they'll steal your job or they'll they'll undercut you they'll live they'll have 20 to a house yeah they'll they'll only speak their own language they won't integrate with you they just which of course is rubbish again we're talking about Islamophobia same thing isn't it oh they move they move into our country they don't want to uh Integrate obviously Islamophobia, classic, isn't it? Because it also plays to the fears of the Christian faith, corruption of the Christian faith. Yeah. This is late night. <laughs> Welcome back. We were talking about how we think that probably almost all ignorance needs the focus of a folk devil and a moral panic don't we and we were getting on to Islamophobia yeah Muslims as a folk devil obviously the the ridiculous or they might be terrorists but also they don't integrate with our culture oh they want they want to convert us all to Islam this is a Christian country blah, 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 that kind of thing yeah yeah no. boring god swallow those of oh, conservative gays yeah cl- especially what moral panic was there recently? Well, 80s, again. The A- AIDS. AIDS, shit, yeah. exactly. AIDS was the moral panic that the ignorant world needed to turn gays into the folk devils. Yeah. Look at what these people are going to do to stay, us. Stay away from the shirtlifters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Watch those backdoor bandits. You know what I mean? Right. Mike, you sound like you've uh, used those terms a lot. I, I'm beginning to suspect... What? Suspect what? Anyway, what I was trying to say was uh, fr- those from the conservative viewpoint, i.e. people whose interest it is in for the system to stay exactly the same, will I attempt mean, attempt to discredit people, progressives, people who want to progress either society... Would you, would you say that works both ways? Well, uh, don't get me wrong... I'm not disagreeing with you here. Don't get all defensive. No, no, no. You don't understand I'll, what I'm saying. Go, I'll, let, I'll let you finish. I know exactly what you go were going to counter with. Yeah, what yeah. I was trying to say was, people who want progress in society, and economically, and socially, right, they will be portrayed as usually something very simplistic and evocative. For instance, anarchists. <laughs> loony lefties. I don't think you can suggest... That commies. People... People, everyone doesn't want progression. It's just different ways of different ideas of progression, isn't there? Not you can't sh- say Tories don't want progression. Well, hang on, hang on. You're, That's you're basically just, what you're saying. You're Tories fret. don't want progression, and you people do, that do, they just say are wrong. You, does it you, all work that they way? don't want anything. Do they don't want anything good to happen to uh, ever because it's, no, 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 it's they think the way good. that it is right now it's should the, just be the way that it is. Yeah, but that, do you not realise that's what conservative stands for? Conservative is defending the status quo. Their party is founded on the fact yeah. that everything's great the way it is. The, the the order that is now will always be the best order. If so you they want a, they want no form of progression. The status the example. status quo is essentially you know the the social strata, the order that there is now, i.e. the super rich, the upper class, the middle class, the working class, the underclass, and then me, and then you, who's well below the underclass, sewer class probably. Oh yeah, Earth's core. Class. I'm underneath them, all right. Uh, oh, <laughs> please, my please. That's what they said. Yeah, I bet <laughs> that's it, what she said. I bet oh, they did. Beautiful. No. Anyway, what I was trying to say is, yeah, anyone who anyone who tries to meaningfully 
try and alter the system or suggest a, a progressive method is generally shouted down as unrealistic. You know, we, we're used to the rubbish about there's no magic money tree, you can't get everyone else to pay for something, all these kinds of things. And they're painted, like I said, as very simplistic caricatures, anarchists, loony lefties, commies, far left, troublemakers, to try and discredit their point. That's what I was trying to say. If in doubt, it basically... Kick it out. What you can say is if someone has to create a folk devil or a moral panic, it usually means they're going to lose the argument. Because if you can't take someone on in a straight on argument, then you try and paint them as something that they're not and get people to believe it. Well, they don't necessarily lose the argument then, do they? they no, win exactly. It. They win it just by, but by a shit way. <laughs> yeah. Do you know why? I'm talking about the state as a whole <clears throat> and the power structures we have. Cool. This was what I was trying to work to. I was hoping to get this done in the last segment, but we'll, we'll bring it over now. Mike, we're, we're talking about folk devils and moral panics. Obviously, they happen in the media. They also happen in communities. You know, negative folk folklore, images negative images. Media. Yeah, but yeah. it happens in communities as well. You know, oh, look, there's a new face. Oh, you know, I've, I've heard about people like that. Who's you that? Know, that? Who's that? I haven't seen him in here before. Yeah, there's a stranger what, in what our are town. Doing, what are they doing in here? Exactly. Get the pitchforks. <laughs> Get the fucking pitchforks. Get the pitchforks, we're chasing them out. And this is just Mike and his allotment. Yeah. No, fuck it, I'll chase him. Yeah. Don't you don't you let me see you if I haven't seen you already. <laughs> Brilliant. I will get you. There is obviously a fear of change. The bigger picture from folk devils and moral panics is divide and rule. Have you ever heard of the concept of divide and conquer? Divide yeah, and rule. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Go on then. Why don't you explain it to us? Encapsulate it in a phrase. How about I'll encapsulate you in a phrase. Ah. <sighs> Never mind. Talking about growing. No. We were talking about, well, I was using, talking about growing. using tactics to take people's minds Tic-tacs. off something. That's your classic way of winning an argument Tic-tacs. is by completely changing the subject. That's what she said. Tic-tacs. So, what I meant was, Mike, for Divine and Conquer to work, you must have folk devils and moral panics. They're, in, they're an integral part of it. If you're anything below the upper class, you are basically being shafted in the power structures we have. Seriously, like I, I mean, middle class, middle upper way. class. No, not in a good way. I know you like to be shafted every weekend, Mike, but every day we're talking about the negative shafting. Oh, day. You are, you are, you oh, are legitimately no. being exploited. Even if you think I you're love wealthy, legitimate you're being all exploited. being exploited by the elites. And you only have to look into you are things such like, a moral entrepreneur. Sh- shut shut up. up! You only have to look at the banking system. You only have to look at uh, social oh, mobility people. and. <laughs> all kinds of things like that the structure of government the military industrial complex in America you are all being exploited unless you are in government or of the very upper classes you are all being exploited to varying extents if you all came to the universal conclusion that yes we are all being exploited and you all said to each other you reached across class divides you know someone in a comfortable middle class home went to a sink estate and said you know what I know, I know I'm a bit better off than you, but you know we're all being exploited. We're all being taken the mickey out of. Why don't we all just? Why don't we get rid of them? Why don't we march on the Houses of Parliament? We'll take, we'll take out, fuck them up. T- yeah, take out the government. We'll take out the bankers, whoever, the structures that that are in place right now. They're too corrupt. Exactly, if you like. Divide and conquer is the tactic they use to prevent that happening. And it's a very simple tactic, especially with 24-hour news media and television. Use you distract different use moral groups. entrepreneurs like you. Oh, not me. I'm not a moral entrepreneur. Mike. I'm the exact <laughs> opposite. Use, use moral entre- oh, that's exactly what a moral entrepreneur would say. <laughs> <laughs> you're an alien because I know this. Because if you say you're not an alien, that's exactly what an alien would say. I am an alien. That's your logic. Speechless logic, Mike, as always. Oh, well, that's what she says. So, divide and conquer, yes. What? You use moral entrepreneurs like Aaron. No. Okay, that's an example, yes. You do use moral entrepreneurs. It relies on like, folk like devils and moral panic. Shut up. You create it. To keep divide and conquer means you turn all little factions against each other. So that they can't all... Group they can't all unite. And, ...and get up in your shit. Exactly. As long as you keep the masses who are being exploited ignorant of it and even turning them against each other classic yeah. example working class hate and the underclass 
the and the other way around and the other way around the working class hating immigrants who are technically of the same class level as them all these kinds of things as long as we're fighting each other we'll never take down the powers that be and that's exactly the way they want it divide and conquer people so all because of moral entrepreneurs like Aaron (laughs) Aaron is exploiting you all Mike you live in a moral vacuum there's been termed a few characteristics i.e. stages you have to go through really if you're going to be considered a credible moral panic why don't we apply these to an imaginary scenario and create our own moral panic let's do it okay so ah, I'm, con- I'm worried already I'm concerned already <laughs> <laughs> I saw the concern on your face yeah which funnily enough so moral panics have several distinctive features and according to Good and Ben Yehuda moral panic consists of these following characteristics so we're going to apply these to our imaginary character now our imaginary character is uh, a bit of a big guy and he he walks around town he, he's otherwise you know he's pretty discerning and discreet character he's he's a white guy so he kind of blends in no particular features shaven head maybe but uh not not particularly aggressive looking there's nothing particularly untoward about him but he wears a puffin on his head so here we go an actual puffin an actual puffin a live puffin and this puffin never moves off his head so here we go number one has to be concern there must be awareness that the behaviour of the group or category in question is likely to have a negative impact on society me and you what, what, what would our reaction be to this guy we'd laugh exactly we'd laugh our heads off well, we'd probably want to shake his right. hand yeah for, shake for his puffin's beak puff. <laughs> wing <laughs> yeah it, we, we'd shake think, his puffin's something <laughs> Z- zoophilia now yeah, so <clears throat> concern all it takes is a couple of older people maybe in the neighbourhood say oh, I don't think I like the look of, what's wrong with that guy you that's know that's a bit dodgy isn't it that yeah ain't, I mean all that ain't right yeah okay maybe if it's a one off you might dismiss it if you start seeing him a few more days you'll be like this guy's weird you might, men- you might mention it to a parish councillor don't <laughs> You oh, might mention it. Get to, over yourself. You might mention it to a parish council, or maybe to the to the uh, I don't know, a leader of the community group or something. Um, I don't know. If Local you've... hero, me. No, Mike. Local deviant. So they'll be like, I'm not. I'm not saying that he's necessarily a criminal, but have you seen the way he walks with that bird on his head all the time? I mean, is is, is he okay upstairs? Is is there something wrong with him? Must be something wrong with him. There we go. That's the concern instantly. Oh, I'll have a look out. I'll, I'll see if I can talk to him. Yeah, right in the head. <laughs> yeah, right on the air. For God's sake. He's a puffin. <laughs> so, so now what follows on from concern, Mike? Hostility. Hostility. Oi, puffin! <laughs> <laughs> Very good demonstration. You Host- may right, son! Hostility increases towards this person, and they become folk devils. The division clearly falls between them and us. So, starting from that initial concern, perhaps the person speaks to him... Maybe he says there's 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 nothing to worry about. He's uh, he's recently moved to the village, but the initial person, they can't let it go. They start telling all their friends. Their friends start saying, "You about this crazy guy wearing a bird on his head?" You seen that puffin bloke? Yeah, and and you know again instantly the conversation turns towards. He, there must be something mentally wrong with him. What what why would he? Uh, why 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 would he dress like that? Why why would he have a bird on his head? every time we see him you know it's there's clearly something very wrong with him and you know what what is there wrong with him he's just he's breaking society's codes on dress it, you know another, another obvious example would be if he was walking around naked all day hmm. but obviously Look, that's a little bit more extreme yeah. he, he's, he's weird he's not the same as us exactly he's done nothing wrong he's, he's, not, he's, he's no not one crim- of us there's no criminal behaviour there's no outrage in public decency it's just whispers that go round and all of a sudden there's a there's a groundswell of negative opinion towards him. Consensus follows on from hostility, which is uh, the the concern, which obviously will never be nationwide unless it's in a national newspaper. There must be some widespread acceptance, i.e., in a small community, that the group or person in question poses a very real threat to society. It is important at this stage that the moral entrepreneurs are um, very vocal, Mike, Mike. <laughs> and the. F- the folk devils, Mike, appear weak and disorganised. Oh. <laughs> oh. An example of this, taking into account our puffin character, is that, okay, all of a sudden, 
the people, the more entrepreneurs who started this, oh, he must have something wrong upstairs. Then you start to, they've got to, they've got to make it concrete. They've got to have a concrete reason why people should be intimidated by him. Did you wear that bloke with a puffer on his head, roped a little? <laughs> no, that's a bit extreme, Mike. I'd like to strick that's stricken from the record. No, for instance, spreading rumours about where you've seen it. Rumour. Rumour has it. I saw that bloke with a puffer on his head walk out the brothel. Uh, maybe. You could also say, like you say, I, I saw him around the playground. I heard he deals drugs to kids. Yeah, you could say that. You could say, you know, I, I heard he, uh, I heard he, I heard he's been pinching from the shop. He uses the puffin as a distraction. None of these things have to be true. You have just got to put the ideas in people's heads, and instantly they'll yeah, make the correlation with. Well, he does wear a puffin on his head, yeah. so may, maybe he is a bit crazy. Crap, so, yeah, the crap is usually spread by women. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. Kurt, Kurt into oh my god! You never guess what I saw him do. <laughs> It is, it is gossip, gossip of the most well, negative kind. Well, she said that he said that she said <laughs> that last Thursday he did this. Very good, Mike. Or should I say Mistress Large? Easy now. You old spinster, you. So, the consensus, and again, folk devils appearing weak and disorganised. Somebody tries to speak to the man. Maybe he doesn't speak. Maybe he's mute. He just smiles at them. And that gives you them even more of a reason. Do you see a smile? What a creep. Exactly. Oh, he doesn't say a word. So he doesn't get to defend himself. Disproportionality. He doesn't want any part of it. He doesn't want to be, want to be part of this community. Ah, there we go. You, now you're getting yeah, it. Yeah, speak to no one. Forgive me for screwing up that quite simple word. Disproportionally. Oh my God, would there's you, too many like, syllables. Would you like me to read the word for you, Aaron? Go on. Disproportionality. Thank you, Mike. The action taken is disproportionate to the actual threat posed by the accused group. Well, we've already mentioned that. This guy doesn't want any trouble. What's one bloke with a puff in his head exactly. really going to do? Don't want any trouble. Don't want any trouble. What's, what's he going to? What, how is he going to threaten this this society? Is he, he going to tear de- tear it down at the scenes? Is he, 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 he? going to do fuck all snow <laughs> fucker? Is he? <laughs> at the end of the day, realistically, he's just a bloke with a puff in his head. <laughs> you know what I mean, and all of a sudden, he's a bloke with a puff in his head. The deals drugs to kids and like, and he's a threat. He's a threat to the supports youngsters. Supports the sex trade. <laughs> like. He's a human trafficker. Yeah, he's a supporter of the Nazis. Obviously, a Nazi sympathizer. Yeah, and all this come because some ignorant person spread rumours, and instantly rumors. it instantly it sticks because and shit you know what? Me, shit sticks. It gets back to our initial thing, Mike. What is fear based on? Ignorance. Yes, confusion, not understanding something. It's when you do not understand the person. What does he do that then? He must be people. people. <laughs> exactly. Well, exactly. Yeah, a little bit crude, but that's how it works. Yeah. I don't understand him. He's exotic. I, I can't comprehend what he's all about. So he must be dangerous. And finally, volatility. Moral panics are highly volatile and tend to disappear as quickly as they appear due to a wane in public interest. Obviously, that's talking about the wider interest rather than a community. Mm. But like you say, people can be driven out of communities because of this. Yeah, it's the basis People of racism and all kinds of and homophobia, all kinds of other ignorance, yeah. and and like you say, pitchforks and witch hunting. Yeah, chase them out, get rid of them. Don't want them here. Exactly. Don't want no puffins in no, here. So yeah, exactly. So now the puffin man, he's been chased out of town. That's our show on folk devils and moral panics, folks. I hope you've well, you've chuckled along with hope us. You've grown. I hope you've grown intellectually. Yeah. And. Uh, You've learned something, and I hope, obviously, don't take our word for it, go out and research these things, because... And also become aware of your own behaviour, you know? If you see a guy with a puffin on his head, or any new person that you can't quite get your head around, first of all, there's nothing wrong with them, right? Just make an effort to reach out to them, have a word, maybe become their friend, take them for a drink or something. Anyway... That's our fake double moral panic show. I hope you really enjoyed tonight. Get on, uh, get on Facebook. Let us know what you think, and uh, yeah, tell us, tell us what you come up. Maybe come up with your own folk devils. Yeah, let give us, us know. Give be us some suggestions. What you, uh, what's growing on? Yeah. <laughs> because of course, late night large is the original moral panic. Original. So we'll, we'll we'll catch you next week. Go you later.